Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Joel. I've got some exciting news to share with you today. I've got more of your questions to tackle today. We're talking project management software, motivation, all of these things, reinventing yourself. Ah, the pressures of freelancing. We'll get to all of that and more in today's video. That's right, today I've got some exciting news to share with you. Some decisions I've made right up here in the old noggin that are gonna come out the old mouth hole. We're gonna talk about all those things today. The first is an idea that I've had, a spark of creativity, if you will, about this channel, about the things we talk about, the things that we're into on this channel and how it might help you more as the time and the future of this channel develop and progress. So here's my idea. My idea is to turn this channel completely and entirely over to you all. I mean, who better knows what you want to hear, what you want to see, what you need to know than you? I know, I certainly don't. So here's what I thought. I have had some great success answering your questions every single Friday on a segment called Fiverr Talks, where we talk about the gig platform, the selling platform, the freelance platform, Fiverr.com, and how to become a top-rated seller like I've been able to do over the last eight to nine, almost 10 years. And what I thought we would do is we would expand that same idea to my Tuesday videos where we don't talk about just Fiverr, we talk about all of freelancing. You see, one of the cool things about my experience is that I've been a freelancer for about 20 years. That's right, since about 2003 or four, I've been a freelancer and I now have a team of five or six freelancers that work for me and with me every single day. So I know a lot about what it means to be a freelancer to work for yourself, to build a business, or just build a side hustle, whatever it is, and I thought we would turn Tuesdays into, get this, you ready? Freelancer talks. So we got Fiverr talks on Fridays, freelancer talks on Tuesdays, and in both of these segments, I'm going to answer your questions. That's right, 100% your questions from the comments section. Maybe every now and then I'll throw in a video where I just talk about what I wanna talk about. But for now, we're gonna focus on your comments, your questions. So please be sure to leave me your questions down below about the freelance life, about how to become a top rated seller on Fiverr. I answer Fiverr questions on Friday, freelancer questions on Tuesday. <coughs> just got me a little choked up here, but I'm going to try to do less editing on these videos by not cutting because I want you to see the real life raw me uncut so that you can tell that this is genuine. I'm not putting on a show here. I'm not actually going and looking up the answers to these. I'm reading your questions in real time, giving you the benefit of my experience for whatever it's worth for you. And some people say the advice is worth what you pay for it. I have a series of questions that I want to go through today to kick off this new format of freelancer talks where we talk about freelancing business and all of the things in between. And today's questions start with a question from Thysum. Thysum, I think I'm saying that wrong, but I'm gonna go with it, Thysum. He says, can you recommend some project management software to a person who works with a team on Fiverr or somewhere else? Do you have any tips? This is maybe the number one question that I get about working with a team of people is what project management software do you use to manage these people, your tasks, and uh, all the things related? And the way that I'm going to answer this is pretty simple. Uh, the answer is only use what you need. Make sure that what you need is very basic to the level you need it to be. Meaning that if it's just you or you and another person, make it super simple. You want to know how I started? I started with a wonderful tool that no longer exists called Wonderlist. It, it was bought by Microsoft and shut down a couple years ago. I cried. I used Wonderlist as a way to make a to-do list for myself. I put deadlines on there. I could attach details. And when I had another freelancer start working with me, I shared my list with him and he worked off my list. It was very basic, it was, it was very simple, but it worked for us, and it's all we needed. Today, there's a great app called Todoist that I think would fit the same bill. It's just a simple to-do list, but a way to get into the habit of managing your projects and your details in one central place, that it is your go-to spot for all the things you need to know about your projects, deadlines, details, put them all there, 
figure out and find a way to share that with the other freelancers that you're working with and use it to manage. Now, as my business grew, as my team grew, we outgrew Wonderlist, and eventually we moved on to software that was a little more robust, but I would still encourage you to make sure that you keep it as simple as you possibly can. Don't go all the way to something super complex like Basecamp that can be uber complex or even more simplified if you only have a couple people and a couple details. Um, as far as good options, I've never used Basecamp before. I know clients that have used it because it was just a little too complicated for my creative process, my business process. The project management softwares that I've used with relative success um, are Rike, Airtable, and now Monday. But I will say they are in that order, increasing in complexity, there's automation. And as my team has grown, as the automation, as the process has grown, so too has the software. And there are parts of it that I can't even manage myself because it takes a bigger brain than I have. Thankfully, I have bigger brains on my team. But those things all grew in complexity as necessary for our team. The other thing to think about when looking at project management softwares is the cost. I remember moving from Rike to Airtable, there was a big jump in cost. From Airtable to Monday, there was a jump in cost. And with more complexity comes more cost. So that's why I would say start with a free app like Todoist or some other to-do list manager one thing that I love these days, and this could be a secret weapon for you, if you're just doing a simple task-related list, I use Wonderlist for a lot of things. Uh, you can share your lists in Wonderlist with other people, and if you're simply putting together a to-do list and collaborating with another person, Wonderlist might be a good place to start. I'm sorry, I said Wonderlist several times. I meant Evernote. Blah, 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 send it back. Evernote. I used to use Wonderlist. It no longer exists. Now I use Evernote for taking notes, making personal to-do lists. There's lots of free apps. There's a version of, of Evernote that is free. You can pay for a premium version for other features, but just make it, whatever you do, make it as simple as possible so that you can scale as necessary and you're not going right to the most complex thing that costs you thousands of dollars a year when you really won't use it. So thank you so much for that question. Thanks for thinking about it. Keep it simple and try some of those tools out. See what fits you best. Um, my next question comes from EOS. EOS asks, how do you handle demotivation? Ooh, good question. Sometimes I have a lot of work to do, but I don't know why I simply can't sit in front of my laptop. I get you. I get you here. This is something that we all struggle with from time to time. So the first way you handle it is to realize that it's a real thing. Lack of motivation in the freelance world is a real thing because nobody's standing over you. You're not in an office setting where your boss is down the hall or walking past your office and you need to look busy like George Costanza. That's the George Costanza secret to being busy is look frustrated all the time because frustrated people are busy in most people's eyes. But what I would say is realize that it's a real thing. Everybody struggles with finding motivation sometime or another, even me, even the most motivated and seasoned of freelancers. The way that you should deal with this is you need to set up cycles and routines in your life that will help to motivate you every day. Let's go back to the first question about project management and lists. Lists are a great way to get motivated. Write out on a whiteboard. I used to use a physical whiteboard on my wall. Before that, I used yellow notepads on my desk. I would draw a little circle and then write something next to it or draw a little box and write something next to it. And as I completed that thing, I would check it off my list for the day. Even if it was take this piece of mail to the mailbox clean up the pile of things in the corner of the office. You know, simple tasks, put them on a to-do list because every time you see yourself check something off that list, ooh, there's motivation to get that next thing done. Lists are a great secret to motivation. They're a great secret to get things done. And oftentimes I will place something that I've already done on a list so I can check it off because it's motivating, it's thrilling, it's the gamification of work. So I would say use that little secret to get yourself motivated. And like I said, put together cycles and rhythms that motivate you. You know, a lot of times I'll give myself a short little deadline to see if I can get more done in that timeline. Like let's say it's 10.30 in the morning and I have a phone call at noon. I'll say, 
I want to get this much stuff done before my phone call at noon. So let's see if I can do it and make it a little challenge. Let me try to get all this done before my phone call at noon, knowing that if I don't, it's not the end of the world. But if I do, I've motivated myself. I've figured out a way to make myself more productive by giving myself a goal. I used to be really into running before I started having back problems. And this is something you do in running. It's got a funny name that I'm not going to say because it, it sounds funny. Um, and, and what you would do is you would pick a point in the far distance and you would say, I'm going to sprint to that point. When I get there, I'm going to go back to my normal pace and it actually makes you faster because you're sprinting in little short chunks and then going back to your regular pace. The same with freelancing. Give yourself that little blip of motivation, make a list, set short little goals throughout the day, and you'll find that you get more done before your day's over than you would have just slogging away at the big giant pile of work that you had in front of you. And trust me, you need to stay motivated because an unmotivated freelancer is a broke freelancer. You don't work, you don't eat in this world. So make sure you don't do something silly and take a nap when you have a deadline in front of you and miss something that could lead to really poor results in the future. So thanks for the question. Hopefully that was helpful. Santiago asks, I was wondering, you say you need to, re to reinvent yourself every three to four years. I did say that in my video on Friday. We were talking about reinventing yourself every few years to stay fresh, keep your business moving forward, growing, all that stuff. So yes, I did say that. And if you haven't seen that, go back to Friday's video. He says, at what point though, in that period, do you say, hey, I need to start thinking ahead. What new skills do I need to learn in order to stay above the crowd in two to three years? That's a really good question. That's a, that's a valid question and one that five years ago I wouldn't have been able to answer because the first time that I reinvented myself and my business, it was an accident. I started out as a voice actor, doing voiceovers in the corner of my bedroom with an old microphone. And the way that I advertised those services was with a video of myself saying, I'm a voice actor, I'll record your, your voiceover. And at the time I wasn't 10 years ago, had no experience, nothing like I do today. And somebody came along and said, I don't need a voiceover, I need a video. And I like the video where you were advertising your voiceover services. Can you do a video like that for me? At first I said no, then I thought about it. And the next day I emailed the guy back and said, yes, I can do that. And in that moment, I reinvented my business from just a freelance voiceover business to a freelance voiceover and spokesperson business. Now I had two different streams, two different arms to this one business. Then the next thing that happened is as I was doing voiceovers, shooting videos on camera, several years went by and people began to say, I'm hiring you to do the voiceover for an animated video. You don't happen to do animated videos, do you? The answer back then was no. And when I said no enough times, I finally said, wait a minute, I should probably begin to learn how to do this because a lot of people are already asking me if I can do this. There's a customer base out there. So let's just simply fulfill that need. And I began to learn to animate and started doing whiteboard videos that weren't very good, but I got better and the software got better and went further down the line. The line and today I don't do any spokesperson videos. I don't do any on-camera work. I almost do 100% animations and voiceovers. But I guess what I'm saying is that the way that you reinvent yourself often Sometimes it will present yourself in the form of listening to your customers. If you're listening close enough to the people you serve, they will tell you what your next step should be. If you hear customers consistently ask for the same things, look for the same results, uh, inquire about other services that maybe you don't offer and they're somewhat relatable, maybe something you could learn or hire somebody who is an expert in and bring them in over here in some way then you can safely reinvent yourself without taking too much risk because every time you do, you're making an investment in a skill that you don't need right now, but you're hoping you'll need in the future, right? So the way that you justify that, that risk is by having people that are already asking for that skill to be useful, for that service. And so that's the way that I've done it. And, and these days, I'm keeping my ear to the ground. These days, it looks like reinventing the way I do video. I've committed myself and my business to the medium of video, which I think is a very safe bet right now. But I'm reinventing myself by looking ahead, saying, 
We're doing these kinds of videos today, but what kinds of videos are going to be popular in the future? Maybe you're a graphic designer and you're thinking, I'm doing logos today, but what's going to be the logo of the future? Or what do logos look like in the future? Maybe there, there's something else or looking ahead going, maybe it's this kind of social media graphic content. If you're a copywriter, you're writing a lot of blog articles today, maybe you're saying in the future it's not going to be blog articles, it's going to be uh, scientific facts posts, whatever it is. Keeping your ear to, ground, to the ground for what people are asking for in your industry and what your customers, your existing customers are already asking you for will help you to know how you should reinvent yourself every two, three, four years. Because I think it is important if you never change, then your business will never evolve and eventually you'll stop growing and start declining and you won't be able to stop the decline and eventually your business will disappear altogether, which is what you want to avoid as a freelancer. You're constantly both doing good work and cultivating better work for the future as you seek to reinvent yourself every now and then. Great question, Santiago. Thanks for letting me riff on that for a while. One more question for today's first episode of Freelancer Talks. I love this already. VO Odyssey, faithful listener and commenter. Thank you for your question. Uh, he says, hey, Joel. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for addressing my question in the last video. Well, you're very welcome. I love when people ask repeat questions or follow-up questions. Not the same question again. He says, I've got another one for you. What system are you using for accounting? I'm better on the production side of business than the administration and accounting. Do you have any tips for me? Well, VO Odyssey, the first thing I would say is most freelancers share that same makeup. We are creators. We're makers. We're doers. We are not trackers of the creation, right? Now, there are some people that are good at both. I am thankful that I am both a creative and an analytical. Both sides of my brain kind of work in concert. I think I'm organized until I get around really organized people and I realize I'm not a really, really organized person. I'm just pretty organized, maybe more organized than the average bear. But for most of us, this is the struggle. We are the doer. We are the creator. We know how to do the work, but we don't necessarily love tracking it, um, keeping keeping tabs on expenses, uh, our accounting at the end of the year. I mean, in the States here, we're getting ready to close up our books for the year here in 2021, and we'll be doing taxes to see how much money that uh, the government is going to take from us. It's a painful time of the year, and uh, having a good system for accounting and things like that is crucial. I've seen a lot of businesses and a lot of freelancers have to pack it up and go work for somebody else because they just couldn't take care of their books. They couldn't tell where their money was going. They couldn't tell how much they were making. So the way it started for me, this is a lot like project management software. Start as simply as you can. The way I started was a series of very simple Excel spreadsheets. Today, it's Google Sheets that I use, Google Numbers to track these things. And still, in most cases, up until this year, I was using a Google spreadsheet to track all my income. I was tracking every single project and transaction, put it in the Google spreadsheet. Very simple, total up the ad at the bottom. I was using that total to calculate my quarterly taxes that I needed to pay, all that sorts of things. So I would say you don't necessarily need accounting software to track all of your expenses as a freelancer, you can earn lots of money, several hundred thousand dollars a year and only track it with a spreadsheet. You don't need QuickBooks. You don't need uh, any of these other really expensive, um, crazy tools. But I will tell you about a free tool that I've been using, not a sponsorship, just something I've been using for a long time, but you can sponsor me if you want, is a tool called Expensify. That is a great free tool. It allows you to create expense reports. You can scan in receipts, um, take pictures of them so you have them on file. Then you can get rid of the receipt or the email that has the receipt in it. It tracks your expenses, creates little expense reports so you can see how much is going out. Uh, and then, you know, plug that in with a spreadsheet and say, here's the number of, uh, of expenses for this month. Here's the number of revenue for this month. Here's my net profit, things like that. Another one that uh, my business just recently started using, it has some cost to it, is called YNAB, stands for You Need a Budget, Y-N-A-B. 
Uh, YNAB is a pretty cool tool. You can integrate it with your business account and pull all those transactions in and then build a budget because I just I believe just like in your personal life, your business should have a budget and it's really important to not only track what you're making but what you're spending to make that. Expenses all the way down to computers and software and, and even your internet connection, things like that. We'll talk about that in future videos. That's not what you asked, but you get that as a bonus. So start simply, start with something like spreadsheets, maybe branch out, use Expensify for your expenses, look into YNAB, of course there's QuickBooks, of course there's all those other things, but most freelancers just won't need it, and you can make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and simply manage things through free tools like a Google spreadsheet or something like that. The point is, use something you're comfortable with and actually use it so that at the end of the year, it's not a crisis. That's how businesses go out of business. It's the books. It's not necessarily the revenue. It's the back room, okay? So use all those things to help keep yourself on track and set up for success every single year. Hey, this was absolutely awesome for me. I love this new idea. I hope you do too. If you're a freelancer and you have a question about anything related to freelancing, well then leave me a question down below in the comments. I'll try to get to it next Tuesday at my next episode of Freelancer Talks. Until then, thanks for watching and remember, keep doing because the future favors the doers.